Who taught the sun where to hide in the morning? Who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who told the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star? I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Let all creation testify and this love within me cry. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know. My Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. So let all creation testify and this love within me cry. I know that my Redeemer lives. The very same God that spins things in orbit runs to the weary to the worn and the weak and the same gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken they conquer death to bring me victory so I know my Redeemer lives I know that my Redeemer lives. So let all creation testify and this love within me cry. I know that my Redeemer lives. Yes, I know that my Redeemer lives. I, I know. Let my Redeemer live. So let all creation testify and this love within me cry. I know that my Redeemer lives. I, I know my Redeemer lives. I, I know that my Redeemer lives. Let all creation testify and this love within me cry. I know that my Redeemer He lives to take away my shame and He lives forever. I proclaim that the pardon for my sin. Well, the precious life he gave but now he's alive and there's an empty grave yes i know that my redeemer lives oh i know that my redeemer lives so let all creation testify in this life within me cry I know that my Redeemer lives yes I know that my Redeemer lives I, I know that my Redeemer lives let all creation testify and this life within me cry I, I know that my Redeemer lives Worthy of every song you could ever sing Worthy of every praise that we could ever bring Worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, the name of
above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save You're worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you You're worthy of every song we could ever sing You're worthy of every praise we could ever bring And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you, oh, we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name, yeah. And Jesus, the only one who could ever save. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. And there is none besides you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And lead me in your And lead me in your love To those around me Cause holy Lord There is no one like you And there is none besides you Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. You're worthy of every song we could ever sing. You're worthy of every praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live here for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. You're worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. And there is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Cause holy, there is no one like you and there is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you and there is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Church, praise God. I hope that we find you well again today. Loving God, serving God, praising God, living for God, honoring God and everything that you do. You do it in the name of Jesus and do it that God may receive the glory, that God may be praised and that God may be glorified. It's good to be with you once again to share the word of God with you. Um, I, I, am, I am a very blessed man because uh, I, I had a message in my mind that I wanted to preach about. 
something dropped in my heart. This, today's what? Today's Wednesday? And um, it dropped in my heart yesterday, and I said, you know what, that's, that's, a, that's a good message. I was out the front yard doing something. I thought, that's, 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 that's a great message, you know? And, um, but it was a bit tricky. I, I tried to work out, how in the world do you preach this message? And you know, the funny thing is, when you, when you try to preach anything, you try to teach anything, if you try to use your own mind to try to work out what it is that God has given you, it actually doesn't work. Uh, and I, you know, I, I've been preaching for this long and still you forget these certain principles, you know? That when God gives you a word or a message, you have to ask God to give you a scripture. He's got to give you a scripture in order that it may illuminate the, the, the word. God doesn't need my imagination or my thoughts to, elim- to, to illuminate his, 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 uh, his word. So when he speaks something to me, he expects me that I receive the word of the Lord. I expect to go back to the word of the Lord and confirm what it is from the word, not my ideas. I'm trying to rationalize what it is because the more I tried to figure out what I was trying to say, the more complicated it became. And I just like, I was like, I, so I said to myself before I went to bed, I said, Lord, I, I, I won't be able to preach that uh, for, for this Sunday. And I went to bed, had a good sleep, woke up in the morning very early and I was, I was talking to the Lord and I, you know, always my mind is always talking. I wake up and I talk to God. That's what I do. You know, I go to sleep, I talk to God. I wake up and I talk to God. And, uh, and so I woke up in the morning and my, and my mind was saying to the Lord, oh, Lord, let me preach this message, this other message. It's much easier. You know, something nice about love or something, you know. And uh, the message kept coming back. And so, no, no, we preach about love. Lord, we talk about love. That's something easy, you know. And, and um and uh, he understood why I was trying to push it away because I did not comprehend the concept. I did not know how to relate the concept to the Christian and how to relate properly convey because there are some, uh, some, some tricks to this particular message. And so as I was lying down there and the message just would not leave my mind, I just allowed the word of God to fill my heart uh, and it was just like, bling, okay, yeah, okay. Bling. Okay. Yeah. Now we're talking, Lord. Bling. Keep it coming. Now we understand what we're doing. So it taught me a lesson, reminded me of something that when you preach, you got to get your, your, your understanding out of the way and go back to God's word and let God's word. God's word is sufficient. You do not need to rely on my understanding of what God has said to me for you to, to convey it to you. Uh, what God says to me is to be val- validated by his word. So we're going to go into the word and we're going to deal with something. So the, the message today is, a, is concerning a new word. I never knew the word and I learned this new word. And um, it, it's, it's a word that I learned through the experience that the world is having right now concerning the COVID-19. And, you know, everyone were, was always talking about those who are, those who have the virus and those who have the virus and testing those who have the virus. And then we discovered along the way that there were these people who had the virus and, when, and they had the virus, but they did not manifest. They showed no signs and they showed no symptoms of being sick, but yet they had the virus. And these people who had the virus but were not, were not manifesting the symptoms of being sick or the symptoms of being ill, uh, they were going around the world and they were going about the place and they were making other people sick because they themselves did not know that they were sick. And the, the, the clinical word, the, the medical word for, for a person who has an illness, but the illness is not affecting them, but they're carriers of the illness and they, they show no, no symptoms, no sickness, no, you know, no, no, nothing at all, that, that there are no signs that they're, that they're sick. Um, they're called asymptomatic, asymptomatic, a, sim- all one word, asymptomatic. And it's a, it's, a, it's a word, I'm sure that uh, Sister Charmaine, hi Sister Charmaine, I'm sure that those who are nurses, Naomi and Tash, and we have, a, we have a whole heap of nurses in our church, they would understand what an asymptomatic patient was or asymptomatic individual was and, um, and understand the dangers and the, the challenges of a person who's asymptomatic. Uh, but they're real, real uh, people in our world which are, which are asymptomatic. Um, Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 5. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 5, and verses 31. If I can go to Luke 5, 31, then that will show you what asymptomatic is all about. Asymptomatic is a a very unique concept. Luke, chapter 5, and verses... 
I'm going to go verses, verses 29. And Levi made a great feast in his own town, and publicans, and, um, sorry, <laughs> he made a, a feast in, in, his, in, his, um, in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with him. But the scribes and the Pharisees murmured, they murmured, they murmured against him. Um, against his disciples saying, why do you eat, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? It's a <laughs> so he invited all these people and they're all sitting together. Notice, notice who were railing against Christ? The scribes and the Pharisees. We, we know about those guys. We're going to get to those guys in a, in a minute. But the scribes and the Pharisees, and the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious elite, those who were, in their own mind, they were well. They were, they were good. They were upright. And they were holy. Now, you see, Jesus... In, in, the, in the coming chapters, in, in, the book of, in the book of Matthew, towards the end of, of, uh, of Matthew, he has a lot to say about the scribes and Pharisees. In fact, there is nowhere else in the scripture or no other group in the scripture that he denounces and that he preaches against as much as the scribes and Pharisees. So here they are, they're sitting at meal and you know, they're asking the question, you know, like, why are you sitting down with, with sinners? They're, they're sinners. And Jesus doesn't say, woe unto you, scribe. He doesn't do that. Not here, not here. He just simply says this. And Jesus answering said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician. Now, I'm telling you why I said that. You know the mind of God, right? You can see it there because I know you can know the mind of God in terms of the context of the word because I know what the word says. He's going to curse them down the road. But he says to them, they that are whole do not need a physician. And the scribe and Pharisees would say, yes, that must be us. For we are whole. We don't need a physician. But they that are sick, yes, that's right. They are sick. They need a physician. Everyone can see they're sick. They, they're showing the symptoms of sickness. They're, they're, they're showing the signs of, 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 of being ill, of having a disease. But, but we, no, not us, no, no. We are, we are, we are whole. <laughs> and Christ say, and Christ came, and Christ said again, verses 32, I came not to call the righteous. And they would say, yes, that is us. So oh, that's right. We are whole and we are righteous. He couldn't be talking about us because we're good. We're good. <laughs> I, came, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Yes, the, them, the sick ones, the symptomatic ones, the ones who are manifesting the sins uh, or the disease of sin within them. The sinners to repentance. But we have no need of repentance, for we are whole and we are righteous. And in those two verses, Christ is actually bringing to the, to the fore, in a spiritual context, the, the medical term that we call asymptomatic. And the message that we want to preach today is called the asymptomatic believer. The asymptomatic believer. The believer who thinks that they are absolutely wonderful and perfect because outwardly they are not showing the signs of being sick. Outwardly they know how to walk and they know how to carry themselves and they know how to present themselves and they know what to say and they know what to do in order to, to keep up the facade of being well. While the sinner, on the other hand, it's clear to see. You can know they're sinners. And Christ says, hey, I, 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 have not, I have not come for the whole. And they should have said, Lord, we are not whole. And, they have, and Christ said, I have not come for the righteous. And they should have said, Lord, we are not righteous. Then he could save them. But because they thought they were whole, and because they were pretending to be whole, and because they were showing themselves to be whole, 
<laughs> Who has known the mind of God? He's so intelligent. So he, he, he pats him on the back. Seemingly, he pats him on the back and he said, hey, you're doing a really good job. Keep up your religious facade. You're doing great. You're, you're righteous. I'm blind. I can't see what's going on. I don't know what's happening in all of your lives. I have not yet written on the ground and said, let whom without sin cast a first stone. And let you all. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to leave you to be asymptomatic to your own self, but I'm going to show you what it is to be physically asymptomatic, which means that you're not showing any sign of being ill, even though you have an illness. So a person, for example, can have a cancer within them, and they're not showing any signs of having a cancer until it starts to manifest itself but in some way, shape, or form. Okay. So asymptomatic means that you have a disease in your physical body, but you're not showing any sign or symptom of having that illness. And, and, and the COVID-19 has had many, many, many cases of people who said, look, just, just test me just to see, because I want to go visit my, my, my old grandmother or my, my but I, I don't want to take a chance and think I'm well, because I understand that there's a new uh, a, a concept that's that we need to become more familiar with, which is called asymptomatic, asymptomatic. I, I look okay, but I'm not. I seem okay, but I'm not. I think I'm okay, but the test will prove it. The test must come. Hey, let me tell you something. Te God tests us for a reason. God tests us to show us whether we are sick on the inside or not. Testing is for a reason, okay? That's why I said, now we need to open up. We need testing. We need more testing. Hey, hey. <laughs> guess what? Hallelujah. God, God said, yep, you know what? Church, you need more testing. Before the end of time, before Jesus comes, guess what he does? He tests us and he tests us and he, right now you're being tested. Guess what? He's, he's proving to yourself. That, why didn't let the devil beat you up? Why didn't let, 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 let the devil come into your life like he does? What's he doing? He's testing you because he wants to know who's got the virus of sin on the inside still and who, who does not. Okay, so testing says the virus is there or testing says the virus is not there. That's why I say, Satan, go. Hey, Satan, you, you know, they said what? You've got to do 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 20 million tests. He says, Satan, you can do 7 billion tests. Test them all. Test them all so we can see who, who, is, who is symptomatic and who is asymptomatic and let them know who they are and where they stand. So, hey, hey, I welcome testing because testing is not necessarily to put you down. It's to tell you, hey, Rob, there's something wrong on the inside, you know. Okay. Testing is the only way that you can prove. Searching diligently within the inside is the only way that you can prove who is asymptomatic. Because if you look on the outside, there are no external signs that lets you know that anything is wrong whatsoever. Asymptomatic. Sick on the inside, but showing no illnesses or showing no signs of the symptoms of that illness on the outside. Externally. Internally sick. Externally, it all looks fine. The asymptomatic believer. I can relate. You can relate. You know why we can relate? Because God said in his word, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And the Bible said there is no, there's none righteous, no, not one. So who is this that can say, those that are whole and say, yes, I am whole. Who is righteous? Yes, I am righteous. All have sinned. And when we have sinned, no one knew that we sinned because our sin was secret. And David said, save me from my secret sins and my presumptuous sins. Because when we sin, no one knows because only we know what the corruption on the inside of us is and, and, and we, can, we can hide it with a suit and a tie and a shirt and everything and we can with, with, our, with our beautiful words, but not from God. Mm. Okay. So with, with, with this COVID-19, some people got very, very sick. They manifested illness. Some people got a little bit sick, so they went and got the test, and they oh, you do have it, stay quarantined. And some people, they didn't get sick at all, but yet they, were still, they still had it. And they said little children are, are, the, are the big carriers of, of, the, of, of the illness because they're asymptomatic. The little kids, they've got it. No one knows they have it, and they come and they give you kisses, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and they're so cute, and they give you hugs, but yet they have the disease, okay? And you don't know who has it. But you come and you embrace them, you get close to them, and the sickness that you can't see and you can't tell. Now, why am I saying this? Am I telling this to do this to scorn anybody or to be? No, of course not. I'm going to take some, some life lessons, some, some practical lessons or some things that we are experiencing now, and we're going to apply it to ourselves spiritually, and you'll see that it works. That's why Christ says about the wheat and the tears. 
physical things can teach you spiritual lessons and you grow from them really nicely. So we're going to do that. It's, why not? Why should I not? Let's take advantage of, of, the, of the time we're living in. We're living in a time where people are asymptomatic. There are people who are asymptomatic and they're going to work and they're going to work in old folks' home. A doctor recently in Australia was operating on people and he was asymptomatic and the patients were getting sick and people died. And the people that the nurse who went to, she went to work to help the people, to make them better, but she didn't realize that she was asymptomatic. So you gotta test, you gotta test, you gotta test. And the test will reveal, <laughs> I'm gonna say it again, God is too smart. Testing will reveal if you have the illness or not, okay? That's why God is testing us and God will test you. You know, we have no church now. That's great. What are you going to do? Run around, act the fool, do whatever you want to do? You, you keep that up. You keep that up. Don't worry. I warn you against it, though. It's, it's a time of testing, okay? If you got the illness, there's a perfect time. There's no you, you, preacher not around, you know. You, all we got is brawl on camera. We can just turn him off, you know. He's too loud. Flick him off. Change the channel. I don't want to hear him preaching at me now. Why not? Because, well, you know, uh, 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 I'm, I'm asymptomatic, you know. <laughs> Spiritually, I'm going to show you this. I, I, I don't know. Have you ever heard of a lady called Typhoid Mary? The name is always stuck in my head. I heard it before, Typhoid Mary. I never knew what... Typhoid Mary. Sometimes when somebody wants to put you down, they call you Typhoid Mary. In case you've never heard who Typhoid Mary is, you can look up her up anywhere and you'll find her. She's a very popular person. Typhoid Mary was one of the first people, 1907, 1908, she was one of the first people that was ever diagnosed as being, um, as being a, uh, asymptomatic. Typhoid Mary had a, um, she had a, um, she, they, they, all, they call her Typhoid Mary because there was a disease called Typhoid Fever. And she had this, this thing called Typhoid inside of her. It was like an illness, you know. And because she was asymptomatic, she was a cook. And she loved to cook, right? So she would go and she would cook up the loveliest meals. She didn't spit on them. She didn't, she didn't uh, you know, get anything. But just the fact that she was touching them and there were all these invisible things that the viruses that were on her and on her hands and she didn't wash her hands properly and all these things but that she was doing, she was, she was contaminating the food and she was bringing it to people who were deliciously eating what Typhoid Mary was serving. And she was cooking for them with all of her heart, uh, and she was asymptomatic with this thing called typhoid. And so after working in a couple of places, they realized, hey, hang on for a second. The people that she's serving and the people that she's dealing with, they're dying. So they began to found her. In, in about 1907, they found out, hey, she's making people sick. So they took her, and they locked her up in quarantine for three years, and they figured, you know, after three years, uh, they, you know, she, she, would be, she would be fine, you know? And, and they tested her, and they tested her, and after a little while, you know, they, they, would, they would, sorry about this, but they, they checked her stool, best word, and, to, you know, and, and they see, and they were like, wow, her, her bladder is actually full of, a, what, something, it was, a, um, I think it was a bladder. It, it, was, it was full, I'm not a doctor, so I'm just giving you the information I, as best I can remember. You go back and give you all of it you know, if you really want to know, right? But, but, but it, was, it, was, um, it, was, it was full of this typhoid, you know? And um, after about three years, they thought, you know, we just can't lock her up forever. So they told her, look, here's what you do. You have an illness, okay? It's inside of your body. They told her, do us a favor. We know you're a cook. We know you loved cooking for people. Mary, her name is Mary Mallon. Uh, Mary, don't cook for anybody, okay, Mary? If you cook for people, they're going to get typhoid and you're going to make them sick. You've already killed two people. Hey, but Mary, you killed people and you didn't know. So, they let her out in 1910. And, and in, and, 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 sorry, 1910. And in 1910, she... Um, she began to do housekeeping chores and different things that, that you know, she was doing, being a domestic worker, a factory worker, whatever. But then she wasn't making enough money. And she thought, I don't feel sick. 
<laughs> yeah, we've told you, you're asymptomatic. I know you don't feel sick. I don't feel sick. You're telling me I'm, I'm sick. I want to make my living. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I'm best at cooking. And so she, she changed her name to Mary something else or whatever. And she went to get jobs at different hospitals. And everywhere that Mary Mallon went and everywhere that Typhoid Mary went, people were dying. And she killed about, about 50 people, about 700 or so people recorded, but she said up to 50 people died of this particular illness because they didn't have any contact tracing that they could do there, you know, in that time. But they said that she killed quite a few people because she could not understand that she was asymptomatic. So she was, she was, you know, they, 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 after they found people dying and dying and dying of this particular thing, they said, hang on for a second. Is, is there a lady working here? Yes, said, yeah. What's she look like? Like this. Is her name Mary Mallon? No, it's not. What's her name? Something else, because she changed her name. So they waited for her, and they found it. They said, my goodness. Wow. We told you that you're sick. We told you you, you didn't believe us. You see, the problem in our world today is that there are churches, and there are ministries, and there are pastors, and they're sick. And they're, they're cooking, you know, Christ says, feed my sheep. But they're, they're cooking for you. But the corruption that's in the inside of the pastor that's killing him, he is feeding that to you. And, and, and what he can't see as being deadly because he doesn't understand that people are dying. You see, there are a lot of pastors right now who are preaching to people and they're preaching to them false doctrines. And those false doctrines are being transferred from the minister, from the pulpit to the people. And they're taking in the food he's preparing and they're eating those food and they're going off and they're dying. And when they die, they die without hope because unless the minister feeds you the truth and the word of God, he is going to feed you garbage. And the pastor, I'm going to say it again because Christ is going to say it himself. The pastor, the pastor, and the church and his doctrines, and he says you you he said you you teach for for doctrines the traditions that, that you've always held instead of my word. Okay, so people who are in positions such as myself to pastor to people, to feed the sheep of God, you have to make sure that you're not Typhoid Roberts. You've got to make sure that, that you're not Typhoid Benny. You've got to make sure that you're not Typhoid Nuku. <laughs> Just for a name, okay? Sorry, Nuku. It was convenient. <laughs> You've got to make sure that, that you don't have the Typhoid thing happening, all right? Because if you do, and I'm telling you, God Christ is going to show you how to know. Because how do you know? How do you know? Okay. So... A person who is asymptomatic physically, they don't know. They don't know. But they have an obligation if they're working with people and if they're working around people and if they don't feel well or if something is wrong, they have an obligation to go and get themselves tested or, you know, nowadays I think when you, when you go into some places, you walk in, they scan you for a fever, you've got a fever, you've got a cough, go home, go quarantine yourself because you're going to make other people sick. So physically, it's, it's, it's quite easy for us to find out because we go in and get ourselves tested. But spiritually, an asymptomatic believer Ha! Huh. How can I easily put this? God tests the believer all the time. And if when he tests you, you find yourself falling into sin and falling into iniquity and falling into unrighteousness and falling into uncleanness, and falling into corruption. If when he tests you, you find yourself, because God is the one that administers the test, and if he's testing you, and you find yourself falling short of his righteousness, and if you find yourself that you, know, you, you, you don't have the antibodies to, to, to prevent it or get it out of, your, out of your system, if you find yourself in that state, which oftentimes, especially when you're a young Christian, if you find yourself doing that, you have to understand that 
The last thing you should do is pretend that everything is fine. When it's not fine, you have to find somebody. You've got to find the cross. You've got to find somebody you can trust and say, listen, this thing is going on in my life and we need to talk about it. Because I am asymptomatic. I, you cannot see what's on the inside, but God has been testing me and the test keeps proving. Your tests are proving that you are ill. <laughs> he that faileth in the day of adversity, his faith is weak. He is not at the place that he's supposed to be. She is not at the place that she's supposed to be. You're asymptomatic. And when you say asymptomatic, it means that I can look fine on the outside. Spiritually, I can look fine on the outside, but on the inside, I am not well. And I know I'm not well because I got a test. Who tested you? Jesus tested you. And he said, Pastor Robert, I tested you and you failed. You're not well. If you, if you, if, you, if I'm ministering the word of God and, and I preach that Jesus Christ is not God, don't you know the word of God will test you? The word of God will try you. For the word of God, the Bible says, um, the word of the Lord, they're pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of the earth, you're purified seven times. You know, they, they are pure. These words are meant to test you. They're meant to try you. These words are meant to say to you, hey, Rob, everything is not well. Oh, Rob, your doctrines are wrong. Hey, Pastor Rob, yeah, you're preaching that God is three separate persons. Yeah, show me where it says three persons in the scriptures. It's not there. You're preaching this particular doctrine. Yeah, you're going to make people sick. If you're, if you're preaching things and using words and ideas that are coming from philosophies and are coming from out of, a, out of, out of different um, you know, religious organizations, not from the word of God, you can't help anybody with those things. You're, you're, you're sick. Go heal yourself, Pastor Robert. Go back, get the word, sit in a corner and read your doctrines again and see, no, that's not right, Lord. That's, and be honest with yourself because every time I read my Bible, if you don't have the truth, your doctrines, the Bible is going to challenge. If you preach that Jesus Christ is not God, you're going to read over and over that he is God. You know what I would hate? I would hate to one day divorce my wife. I'm telling you now, clearly. Here's how a pastor can make you sick. Here is how a pastor can make you sick. A, a clear, easy way of how a pastor can make you sick. The pastor knows in the word of God that Jesus Christ said you should not marry and divorce your wife and remarry again. He has said it over and over and over. It's quite clear in the scripture. The Bible says you should not marry a woman or, or marry a husband, break your covenant with that, that person and go marry somebody else. God says, I don't like it. He says, I hate putting away. I don't like divorce. Right? And Christ says over and over again, I don't like divorce. I hate divorce. It's not, it's, it was not so in the beginning. He made them a male and female. He made them one flesh. And what God has joined together can no man break. The pastors, they know that. And then after my wife gets a certain age and, 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 I, and we've hung around for long enough, I don't feel like, uh, you know, I don't love her like I used to. And I start looking around some other place, some other woman, some other girl, some other younger, whatever. You know, I, I start looking around the place and then I leave my wife and find some fault with her, some excuse with her, some, some provocation that we don't get along. And, and, you know, and God wants me to be happy. And then I go and divorce my wife. And, and you know something, man, I, I went to churches where the pastors in the churches were doing that. Hey, I went to the United Pentecostal Church and in the UPC Church, they were divorcing three and four times high up in the ministry. Not just like people that were coming. People in the ministry were divorcing their wives and remarrying them in the church. That's a sign of sickness in a church. But yet, you know, everyone's, everyone's rejoicing. I don't care. What anyone says, you, I don't care what the, what, the, what the leadership of my church says. If my bishop told me that I could divorce my wife and marry somebody else, I would go in the Word of God and say, Bishop, mm -mm, you can do it, but I ain't doing it myself because the Word of God is my leader and the Word of God is my guide. But everybody accepts it because they, 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 you know, they, they, no one complains. No one says that's wrong. They all, they all, you know, and, and those who are divorced, and re they're prophesying and healing. Come on, man. This is the Word. This is, this, people are trying to be saved. It's not time to fool around with the Word of God. 
So there's a sickness. The ministry of the church says, oh, yes, uh, oh, brother Alex, you can, you can divorce your wife and, uh, because, you know, she's not baptized in Jesus' name yet. You can, you can divorce her and marry somebody else and God's going to be okay with that. No, it's not. It was your wife when you were in the world. It was your wife when you were a sinner. And God that joined the two of you guys together. When you became a Christian, you, if the unbelieving wants to depart, let them depart. But you're bound unto God by that covenant. When she comes back, she's still your wife. Oh, that doesn't sound right, Rob. Well, that's welcome to Christianity, okay? What God has joined together, no man can break asunder, and God does not break what is asunder, what he has joined together. It's corruption in churches, okay? So, the problem is it begins with the leaders, the leadership. So, in Matthew chapter 24, the problem with asymptomatic, the problem begins with the pastors, it begins with the leadership. It begins with the leadership. Because the leadership, oh, did I just do that? Mom, I just did that. I keep reminding, I'm dead serious. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> I'm about to flick my pages. This brother Alex, you haven't seen yet, is my finger doppler. We'll just call it that, right? The finger doppler stopped me from licking my finger with my, my, with my mouth all the time, which my mom hates. And so there I shall put my finger doppler here. <laughs> Or I'll keep my finger, my finger doppler in the drawer here. And uh, that way my mom doesn't see me doing that. It, it disgusts her. Yeah, your fingers are dirty. She's right, you know, you, and you're licking it. So I have dipped my finger in the, in the doppler, mother. And now without me licking and getting my own spit. But look at that, brother Alex. It works really well, actually, doesn't it? <laughs> eh? You don't need spit. It, she knows. She knows. Those, old, those older folks, man, they know the good stuff. Okay. So... Christ, the same Pharisees, we're going, to read, we're going to read quite a bit here. The same Pharisees and the scribe, the religious leaders. Like, I am not preaching to, to, to put down people. Because I think before you can put down the people of your church, the ministry of a church itself has to be cleaned up. It has to be right. It has to be, has to be upright. You can't be, you can't be, uh, Christ says, how can you preach against something if you yourself are, or, or, or how can you preach against sin if you're in bondage to sin? You understand that? How can you preach against false doctrine? Nothing drives me crazier than a, than a person who is obviously in false doctrine preaching against false doctrine. A Mormon should not preach against false false doctrine, for you have put faith in Joseph Smith. Uh, a Seventh-day Adventist should not preach against uh, false doctrine, for you have put faith in the Sabbath day. Hey, guess what? My faith is in Jesus Christ alone. I am, I am not putting uh, any faith in Helen G. White. I am not putting any faith in anything, any church. The Brenhamites are putting faith in William Brenham. I am not putting faith in, uh, the Catholics are putting faith in Mother Mary. Any church and any denomination, I don't care who they are, who, had, who tells you to put faith in something else except the Word of God. When I, say, I, when I say we're apostolic, I'm not putting faith in the apostles. I am putting faith in the, what they wrote because they were fallible men as we were. You remember Peter? And, and he was running away from Christ and, he, and, he, and he, um, he betrayed, you know, he denied the Lord. Well, guess what? Paul had to rebuke him and said, you ran away when you were eating with the Gentiles. He was still rebuking because there, there are men like us. There are men like, 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 of men of like passions. Huh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so <clears throat> he says this. He starts off not with the people. Pastor, don't talk about your people until you make sure that you've got all your cupboard clean, you've got everything right. Don't point your finger at anybody because God don't work like that. That's why Christ said, look, I'm going to come, I'm going to be holy, and then I'm not going to attack the people. He was never attacking the people. He was always talking about the leadership, the leadership. If the leadership is correct, then it will filter down to the people. But if the leadership is not correct, then the people are going to be ungodly. Okay. He says, woe unto you. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. What does he say? Hypocrites. Okay, so a, a symptomatic, a, sorry, an asymptomatic believer is a person who knows that they have tested, they have been tested, 
and, and they know that they have failed the test, but yet they are still going to act and behave as though everything was fine. And God calls that hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is how a, 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 a asymptomatic believer hides the fact that they're sick. So in the world today, right now, across uh, the United States, for example, there are people who simply don't know. But if a person went and got tested, they would know. And the test would prove that they're sick. <laughs> And then, and if they go around pretending like everything was okay, then there's something wrong with them. So Christ is saying, Christ is saying to us today, I've tested you and I've tried you and I keep testing you. And Pastor Robert, I tested you before, I'm going to test you again. I'm going to test you next week. I'm going to test you next month. Christ is a tester. Are you talking about we need more testing? Christ is going to test and test and test and test. He's going to test you in the morning. He's going to test you in the evening. He's going to test you when you're sleeping. He's going to test you at work. He's going to test you at school. He's going to test you when you're walking down the street. Jesus is going to keep testing because let me tell you something. He he believes in testing to reveal those who are hip hip hypocrites to themselves and they're hiding their, their symptoms and they're hiding their failures. Don't hide them, bring them to God. Can't manage them, bring them, talk about it to somebody. Go find somebody to talk with and say, hey, listen, I, I, am, I, am, I am asymptomatic. So when you're asymptomatic spiritually, you're a hypocrite. Turn around, wait for a second. Somebody didn't, like, somebody didn't like I said that. Oh, I said they're hip. I said, the Bible says when you're, remember who Christ was talking to? The ones who were whole, the ones who were righteous. Yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? There, it was just a pretense. Okay? And we don't need to pretend. If you're weak, it's okay. You, it's okay to, to, to come to me and say, hey, Rob, this is going on. Hey, Rob, this particular thing, it's okay. It, 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 it won't kill you. <laughs> it won't kill you, but it'll, it'll certainly make us start to work on it. It's like those who are, they don't need a physician. When you come to somebody and, and you say to them, look, we need to talk about this. There's something going on in my life. Don't, be, don't hang your head down in shame. It's okay. We're living in a world where there's a devil who wants to make us sick. He wants to make me sick and you sick. If the devil's making you sick, don't be ashamed. Do you think anybody is ashamed of having COVID-19? It's a symptom of what the world we're living in. There's a devil and he has filled the world with all these viruses spiritually and any of them can get any number of them and there are dozens and dozens of them that can get into your spirit and they can get, so not your spirit yet, let's talk about your flesh first, okay? Because they, a virus spiritually, a virus begins in your flesh. It goes to your spirit afterwards when you're contaminated completely, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. Hang on for a second. I'm going somewhere. Isn't God good, Alex? He gave me this message last night. That's making a lot of sense. That's talking to me. That's talking to everybody. All right. It says this. But what once you scribes and Pharisees, you're hypocrites. You've been tested and you know you failed. You've been tested and you know you're not. But yet you're still. He says, for you, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them to enter in. So if, you're, if you know you have an illness, don't pretend that you're well. Go and get help. Go and seek advice. Go and get counseling. Go and get prayer. Go and get isolated. Go and get fasting. Go and get quarantine. Go and get Jesus. Go and get the healing medicine. You're going to be all right. You're but if you keep pretending like everything is okay when it's not, that's when you kill yourself, man. It's all right. People get sick, but we got the bomb in Gilead. Ah. He says, you're hypocrites. You're hiding what you know. You're hiding what I've revealed. You're, you're hiding what my testing has manifested to you. Hmm. Verses 14 says this. So he said, you ain't getting in. You ain't getting in. You, if you hide what my testing has revealed, <laughs> man, you know what? You know what? The, the boss says, go get tested. Don't go, and, don't go and get tested. See that you're positive and then come back to work and say, oh, no, I'm fine. Everything's good. I'm fine. <coughs> I'm fine. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Hey, when the boss say go get tested, go get tested. And when the, when, the, when, the, when the test says that you're negative, then you come back and you say, no, I'm all right because I, I've been tested. 
Hey, wait, if you're not an overcomer, don't walk like an overcomer. Don't jump like an overcomer. Don't speak in tongues like an overcomer. You're not an overcomer. Go be an overcomer and then come to church of God. If you know you have something against your brother, don't dance and jump around. You know you got something against them. The test has shown it to you that there's something in your heart. You go to pray and what they said and what they did in your heart. Go get rid of it. He said, if you bring the gift and you, and you know there's something wrong, go fix it first. Don't be asymptomatic and, and hypocritical spiritually and cover yourself and walk all nice. Come on, Christian. We're better than that. <laughs> Woe unto you again, you scribe and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you devour widows' houses and for pretense, he says you make long prayer. You make long prayer. Uh, therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. So <laughs> why are you making long prayer? I, I feel fine, but you know you're not. <laughs> I'm going to pray the longest prayer. Me and God are going to talk for hours. Yeah, but you know everything is not well. You're full of bitterness and hate for people. You're full of this and that. You know you are. Leave all that. You're going to get more damned knowing that you're in this condition. All right. Not don't have to hide nothing. God, I think God put the word of God in the church and the ministry. It's to, it's to help you to be saved. There's no need for it. It's okay. Hey, Lord, Pastor Robert's been weak. Oh, yeah. Pastor Robert, oh, I have been weak. I have been, I have had to fast, brother. Three days quarantine, fasting and praying. Oh, my. Jesus, help me. This virus is killing me, man. I've been, I've been on my face begging God. But guess what, Brother Alex? He rose me up after a while. He put a song in my heart and said he put strength in my knees and I, I was able to come back to the thing that was making me trip and stumble and fail. And that same Jesus said, now try it and test it again. And I said, Satan, I, don't come near me. You're, you're a virus. That's why the angel of God wouldn't talk to the devil. He just said, the Lord rebuke you. I, you're sick. I, I'm not getting near you. You know, we have this uh, social distancing now, you know? The angels, they, they want to talk to him. Um, let's talk about the body of Moses. <laughs> like, no, we are not talking about nothing. Get the hands. The Lord rebuke you. You're sick. <laughs> so I can rebuke him now. Tell him, go. I don't want to talk about anything you got to talk about. Don't tell me nothing because you just make us sick. You make us asymptomatic spiritually. We have to hide our, our transgression. We don't want them around the place. He that overcometh the world. Overcomes the world by Jesus Christ. Yes, you can overcome the world. For he has overcome. Woe unto the scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Here he says, for you compass land and sea. You know you're, you're sick because the tests prove it to you. You know you are but spiritually asymptomatic people. They know they have been tested. They know they have failed. But yet, they know the Word has tried them. They know the Spirit of God has tried them. They know it has tried their doctrines, their teachings, what they're, you know, and yet they're still going to go land and they're going to go to where they're going to go. They what? They compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him a what? You kill him. You mean people who are asymptomatic spiritually, which means that they're covering their doctrines that are false, and they're, I mean, you don't, you don't tell me that, let me tell you something. People in other faiths whose doctrines are wrong, the Spirit of God has already come to them and told them something is wrong, and they have not listened. It has said, turn here. If your Bible says, if your church preaches that he's not God, why does it call him God there? Oh, let's not go to that one. Let's leave that one. Let's find another one where it says he's the son of God. Uh, and then, uh, you know, but, but the Bible told you he was God. It clearly said he was God. But yet you rejected that to say, no, he's just God's son. We're a second person. Oh, uh, pastor, we're a second person in God. I can't find that. You're asymptomatic. You're a hypocrite because you know it doesn't say he's a second person. But yet you preach and you say he's a second person. You're making people sick. And if you go across the entire world and you tell people that Jesus is the second person, then you're going to make them a twofold child of hell. It means that your sickness, because the Bible tried your doctrine and the Bible said second person and God was not there. And yet you still went and you still taught them because you thought that your religion was more higher and your traditions was greater than the word of God. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, pastors, who God has told you what you're supposed to preach and what you're supposed to say, but yet you do not. And woe unto me if I don't do and I don't say to you what this word of God says. All right? And with that, I always put a, anytime I get too serious, I put a smile on. 
Hey, this is the word of God not supposed to come like a heavy burden smashing you. It's okay. Let's grow and let's live. It's not supposed to be this heavy thing. I, I, God didn't send me to depress you. God did not send me to give you a spirit of fear. He came to make you aware and to make you understand what's going on spiritually. He came, to, he told me to tell you that this, that all the diseases of sin, they begin in your flesh. All, you see, an asymptomatic person, they will physically in the hospitals like today, right now in Perth, if a person is sick and they don't know it and they're going around, they will make other people sick. A physically asymptomatic in the earth right now, today, having COVID-19. If you're asymptomatic to COVID-19, you will make other people sick. You will infect other people. But if you're asymptomatic spiritually, you, your flesh will infect your spirit. Mm -hmm. And the lust that you feel in your flesh, if it's not brought out in control, if it's not brought to a place where God is where every, bringing every thought into subjection, your entire thought processes spiritually will be unpure all the time. And if you have a lying tongue and you lie all the time, you will start lying. You don't even know when you lie. Lying is going to become easy because lying has become a part of your spirit now. Because your flesh, your flesh is trying to infect your spirit. All sins begin in your flesh. They start in your flesh, but if they're not dealt with in your flesh, that's why it says in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. They're in your flesh. And the devil, has every, the devil has every right to come and try me in the flesh. They had to try Jesus in the flesh. That when he became a human, they tried him in the flesh. But when he passed the test, his spirit could not be corrupted because he would not obey the impulses of his flesh. So when you're spiritually asymptomatic, it means that there's something wrong in your flesh. And your flesh is trying to put it into your spirit. That is why the Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is sick. <laughs> your, your spirit wants to, but you, and you know what? In, after a while, your spirit can slumber as well. Not just your flesh. If, you're, if you keep slumbering in your flesh physically, your spirit will get up on Sunday morning and your spirit will not feel like going to church. Your spirit will not feel like praying. Your spirit will not feel like fasting. Your, and brother, I'm saying that right now because, you know, I've been doing, I've been, I've been fasting as much like I should. <laughs> But I'm telling you, when you're sick, when you're sick and you need to fast, you won't be able to. Because your spirit is on lockdown fasting. It's going to ignore fasting. And it's going to say, no, the way I am is good enough. As long as nobody knows what I'm doing in secret, as long as nobody knows what I'm doing behind the corner, I'm fine. <laughs> But Jesus said, I'm, <laughs> Jesus said, I'm the doctor that knows. I, I know when you're sick. I can see that you're sick. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm trying to help you. I see you're sick. You're asymptomatic. You know there are things that are wrong in your life, and yet you're pretending like it's not. <sighs> Let me preach for a little bit. Let me preach for a little bit. I got a few more things to say. He says, you make them a twofold more child of hell than yourself. That's some strong... Brother Alex, that is some strong words, man. He said, not only are you going to make them see... He says, you know, I like that. Because an asymptomatic person don't feel it, but then they make somebody else sick, and the other person gets violently, violently ill, you know? <laughs> hey, careful of your preacher, man. <laughs> make sure he's teaching you the right thing. He'll make you really sick. He'll blind you completely. I said your preacher will blind you completely. He says there, he says there, well, won't you scribes and Pharisees, you blind. And if the blind... Lead the blind, then they're both going to, and if the infected, preach to the infected, and if the infected are, are, are ministering to the infected, to the uninfected, they're both going to end up sick. <laughs> they're both, everyone's going to end up in hell, okay? You blind guides, which say, whosoever shall swim in the temple, it is nothing. All right? 
Let me tell you something. You're asymptomatic spiritually. You're asymptomatic believer when you're blind to your own condition. I'm going to say it again. You are an asymptomatic believer when you're blind to your own condition. When you can't tell that what you're doing is just not on. It's just not right. When it's okay. When you've justified it. When you've reasoned in your mind for why it's okay. Even though there's a little niggling thing telling you, don't go there, don't do that, don't act that way, don't be like that, even though you know it. But yet the asymptomatic believer will push their conscience, push their conscience, and say, no, no, it's still okay. You're blind because what you've blinded, you're willingly blind. You've blinded yourself to not know that there's a better way for you to behave and to act and to, and to live than the way that you're doing. It's the truth. I might as well say it. And, and, and woe to me if I don't live it. Woe to me. Woe to Pastor Robert if I preach this message and I live in sin. Woe to me. Whosoever shall, uh, it says, verse 7, he says, you fools and you're blind. For whether is greater, the gold of the temple that sanctified the gold. And whosoever shall, you don't know how to think properly. And whosoever shall swear by the altar. Your, your, your justification for things are wrong. Your justifications and your reasons for things are contrary. They, 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 they contradict what, what is wisdom. You're blind, you're fools. Whoso, whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever swear by the gift that's upon it, he is guilty. You fools and blind. For whether is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, swear it by it and by all things therein. And whosoever shall swear by the temple, swear it by it and all things therein. And he that swear by heaven, swear it by, by, and by the throne of, of God. Sit by the throne of God and by him that sit upon the, uh, that sit, sit upon the throne. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you pay tithe than you mint. You know? Oh man, you know when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're spiritually, when you're, um, when you're asymptomatic spiritually, you know, you, you got to find other ways to compensate. You know you're doing what is wrong, but yet you're still going to go and do something else that is seemingly spiritual. Because that's how you know. You're trying to make up for your inadequacies as though, as though you can make up for it. Hey, sin is sin. You can't make up for sin. If you're in sin, get rid of sin. You can't do something else to, to, to alleviate the fact that you're living in sin. You got to get rid of the sin. You got to deal with it. And he says this, I, I'm just preaching what I'm given, okay? I, I wouldn't have a clue why I would even think of this. Once you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you pay tithes and mint and anise and cumin, and you've omitted the weightier matter of the law. You've forgotten judgment and, and mercy and faith. These you have not, you, you've ought to have done and not to leave the other. You blind guide, verses 24. He says this, uh, he, says, which, he says, you strain at, at a gnat, <laughs> but you swallow a camel. You know, he, what did he say? He says, you strain. What are you? You're a weak Christian. But yet you, you know, you, oh, you know, I'm coming, coming. To, you still look, you see, you look, you look strong. Oh, you know, for, you look strong. <laughs> he looks okay to me. Hey, but, but, hey, you're not trying to look okay for Rob. It's God that sees it. It doesn't make any sense to look okay for me if you know you're not right on the inside. It, it's, 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 contra, it, it's contradicting your own purpose for your existence spiritually. Hmm. <laughs> he says, you, you blind guys, you, 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 you strain at a gnat, you can barely lift it. I give you any weight, you can barely lift it. Because when you're sick, you, can, you can't lift anything when you're sick. You're weak when you're sick. Hmm. Then he gets to the real cups of the matter here. He says, woe unto you, scribe and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you may clean the, you may clean the outside. I don't look like I have COVID-19 on the outside, but in the inside, I do. <laughs> I, am, I am physically asymptomatic. I don't look like I'm weak and I'm struggling with sin and I can't overcome this. Every time I'm tested, I fail. But I, I, I look good. <laughs> so that, that's, well, no, that's the best I can do for now. No, it's not. You can eradicate sin. You can sit and talk to God, talk to somebody, work it through and get it over in your life and rebuke the devil from your, from your mind and your heart. <laughs> he says, he says, you, 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 you said, you scribe and Pharisees, 
for you may clean the outside of the cup, how you look and how you, how you carry yourself and don't cough. <coughs> if I, <coughs> Brother Alex, if you came to my house, I'm going like, <coughs> you wouldn't, sorry, this might sound ugly, but I'm, I'm preaching, you know. You wouldn't come near me. You, would be, you wouldn't come in my house. Yeah, brother, you need to go and get yourself tested. Oh, but if I, but if I have the, and I, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, you can suppress the cough. You know the nurse that, got, that killed people here, eh? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Yeah. <laughs> brother Alex. <laughs> eh? <laughs> you see, physically, brother, brother, Alex, brother, 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 um, Alex. brother Alex, listen, physically, I can make you sick. But spiritually, I can make myself sick by knowing that something is wrong and not dealing with it and then acting like it is. Or I know the word of God has shown me what is wrong and yet I pretend I don't see it and I preach it to you. That's the only way I can do it. If I preach to you the wrong thing, then I will make you sick. That's how I transfer because of God, and God has showed me there's something wrong with your doctrine. I think a lot of pastors know there's something wrong. A lot of pastors who preach a God the Trinity, they oftentimes say, we don't understand it. It's a mystery beyond what we can understand. Uh, but we like to use some philosophy, some, some, uh, some, some, some theologians, and some, some this from, you know, this interpretation. We'll have to go back to this council. We have to add a scripture. We have to add a scripture because, you know, something, you should tell you something is wrong. Something is wrong. If you have to go back to, 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 a, to a, 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 a council, just think about it. If you've got to go back to a council that was convened by a Roman Catholic, um, no, no, a Roman emperor in, the, in, in, in Nicaea, if you've got to go back there to get your doctrine formulated, and, and that's what you're basing the Nicene Creed, you're basing your faith on that, are you insane? It was, it, it was called, you, how can you say that the creed is of God when, when the Bible says that, that, that the beast is Rome? How can the head of the church, of, of, the, of, 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 um, of the Roman Empire, call a church meeting and get church people together to come up with a doctrine? It's called by the head of the beast. So how can you be comfortable with that? There's something wrong with your thinking. That is why he says, you fooled, you're blind, you're blind. Can't you see there's something wrong with that doctrine? Whatever comes, if a bitter thing, a sweet thing cannot come out of something bitter. That's what he says, okay? So yet, oh yeah, we know it was, we know the, we know the emperor was there, but we're going to accept it as though it was doctrine. You're blind and you're foolish. You better, you better ask them questions and get some proper answers for, for the doctrine that you have. Better, better look at them carefully because if, somebody, if somebody's infected you, they will send you to hell. I'm telling you, if they've infected you, they'll make you a twofold child of hell. You'll defend the, what, what, the, what, the, what the Roman Catholic Church did. You'll, you'll defend what your, what your preacher preached, that you reject God by doing so. Listen to this. He says that you make, he says uh, within um, you hypocrites, for you make clean the out of, of the cup and the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. And thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that it's within. Oh, come on now. Christian, come on now. Before you start acting spiritually well, why don't you go and get on your knees and go seek God and say, God, and you know, David said, have mercy upon me. I, I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to love and kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Go and tell God I've sinned against you and I acknowledge my sin. Go and talk to God and say to God, cleanse me and make me what I need to be. It's not that hard. He's got the potion. He, he, has, the, he has the power. He has the ability. He has the he has the medicine to make you well. He has the balm. Go make it clean on the inside and, and, and stay tarrying and stay seeking God until the Spirit anoints you, until you're refreshed, until you know you've perceived the strength that He's supposed to give you. But don't walk in your weakness and, and yet you, you pretend that you're, that you're good. Don't do that. Because that makes you asymptomatic spiritually. Won't you scribe them Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you're like, you're like whited sepulchers. Here we go, on the outside again. He says, which are indeed appear beautiful on the outside. A COVID-19 patient who is asymptomatic is, looks beautiful on the outside. <laughs> Rosy cheeks. No, never. They look so beautiful. But my brother, if they come near you, you they'll make you sick for sure. You shake hands with them, they'll make you sick for sure. 
But they look really brilliant on the outside, yeah. Remember the strong muscle man we watched online? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Strong. Yeah, big, strong, yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you get sick from anything. Okay. He says this, he says this. <clears throat> Woe unto you, you scribe and the Pharisees. So he says, for you are like whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Now I'm going to tell you what uncleanness is because the Spirit of God should, should tell you that's unclean, that's unclean. You know in the Old Testament God saying that's unclean, that's unclean, that's unclean, that's unclean, that's unclean. He wrote them all down what's unclean. They're like, oh well, we eat it anyway. <laughs> it's delicious. I don't, know what's, I don't know why God said that's wrong. It's yummy. <laughs> hey? What's wrong with pork chops? They're yummy. <laughs> But God said, don't eat them, right? But we're eating pork chops now. The law is finished, my brother. <laughs> Make our pork roast. But in the Old Testament, man, you know? What did they say? What did the demon say? The demon said, let us go into the swines. Why are they, why do you have the swines there? Because you're growing them. Because there's that, there's that little portion of the, of, the, of the Pharisees who like the swines, you know? So at nighttime, they'll go to the swine dealer and get a, you know, they get a couple of kilos of, uh, uh, of pork roast. Come back and make the pork chop when the law said you shouldn't. So God said, you know what? There are all these different laws. I'm going to put my, I said to you last time, I'm going to put my law on your heart <laughs> and you're going to know what's wrong because I'm going to tell you what's wrong. My spirit, hey, I am not in need of anybody telling me what's wrong. My spirit tells me that don't go there. Don't do that. That's wrong. Your spirit should tell you. And if, if your spirit don't tell you what's wrong, something wrong with you. Something wrong with your spirit. Listen, even so outwardly, you appear righteous unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisies and iniquity. Oh. And then he goes and he... <laughs> the, 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 the spiritually asymptomatic believer, ultimately you get called the same name as the devil. In verses 33... He says, you serpents. What do you call the devil in the, book of, in the book of Genesis? You serpent. Everything begins in Genesis. The first asymptomatic person was the devil. The first asymptomatic person was Satan. He came down like a friend, a pal. As, I'm, I'm a, as God said, and he started talking to you. That's why, that's why the angel said, don't talk to me. What did God say? But you can be fine. What's he doing? He's sick on the inside. Hey, I know you've seen serpents and you, you're, you're used to them, but there's something in that serpent that should not be talking to you. There's a virus inside the serpent. And every time a person has a virus inside of them, and that virus is going to contaminate and kill, because remember what, the, remember what the first serpent did? He contaminated those who heard him speak. I'm going to say it again. The first serpent contaminated those who heard him speak. And God said he was a murderer from the beginning. So it's very important, preachers, it's very important that you get your doctrines right, that when something is telling you and that little buzzing in your body is going, something isn't right with that teaching, that you go back to the Word of God and go back to the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, and say, tell me what's true about this particular thing that I might be able to be pleasing to you. It is very important to you, Christian, it's very important to you that, that, that when God is showing you that you're failing, that you go back to God, you start to fast, you start to pray. You can't just be lazy about the failings He's showing you and just continue on failing. You can't do that because eventually what's going to happen? Let me show you in Romans. Let me show you in Romans what, what He wants to do. Let's go to Romans chapter 7. I'm, I'll be done after that. Let me show you what the devil wants to do. I'm, <laughs> I just did it again. <laughs> You know, that's habits, isn't it? It takes time. That's why, that's why God's patient with us, you know? We build up habits, and Lord, it's taking me some time to get rid of this one, Lord. God's okay. But, you, but guess what? But every time you know you do something that you shouldn't do, like mom said, you know, I love the Word of God, you know? It relates to everything. Hey, my Heavenly Father said, there's certain things I shouldn't do. But habitually, you go and do it. You go, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mean to do that. Let me do it. This is the right way here. That's the right way. Hey, mommy, mommy, Bobby's doing it the right way. That's the right way, mom. <laughs> you, see what, you, see what God, you see what the Word of God does? 
it comes and it puts something in your conscience and say, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. And if you're doing it wrong, Brother Alex, if I'm doing it wrong, don't say, I'm not, oh, it's fine what I'm doing. You, he already told you there's a better way. I want you to do it this way. So every time you, just because of our humanity, oh, you, oh no, you, you said don't do that. Sorry. You did say don't do that. Let me do it the right way then. Romans then. <laughs> you know what? I should just keep it here because I'll <laughs> just automatically, just to remind myself, you know. <laughs> Romans. I use everything to teach. I use everything to preach. Everything, every opportunity I get to, 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 to do. Okay. He says, he says this. For we know the law spiritual, verses 14, Romans 7, 14. For we know the law spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. There's a disease inside of me. For that which I, for, for that which I do, I allow not. For, that, for what I would not, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. If I then do that which I would not, I can send unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but COVID that is in me. Sorry, it is no more I that do it, but the devil that is within me. <laughs> you see, whether it's COVID or the devil, something is making you do what you're not supposed to do. It is no more I that do it, but sin. It is sin that is dwelling inside of me. You see how, I, I, how I, I, I'm used to all these years of licking my finger and turning my pages? And so subconsciously, you know, when you first come to God, you know, you, you're still doing things that you, that you subconsciously said, hey, Lord, I wouldn't. He said, hey, no, that, I know. But after a while, man, you got to get to a point where it's like, no, 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 that, that's just not right. That's not on. In a Christian life, that should not be there anymore. Satan, you got to go because if, I'm going to show you what he wants to do. I'm going to show you a devil. If you think the devil just wants sin to be in your flesh, you have never been so wrong. <laughs> the devil? The devil is a spirit. He has not come to leave sin in your flesh. His war is not against your flesh. It's how it begins. It's not the end of the war. Sin is in my flesh from birth. That's not, he didn't get the victory from birth. His, his success is if he can get that, 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 uh, that sin to go from my flesh into my spirit. Then I become a serpent like him. That's what he wants. Like the Jews, they knew what was right. They saw, they saw Christ raise the dead. They knew what that, that he, and yet they would, they said, they said when, he, when Christ died, you know what happened? That's why they're liars. When he died, they said, we saw an angel come down from heaven and bright light, we saw, oh, and roll the stone away. They said, they gave them money and said, be quiet. But you heard the truth. But you're going to still go around and say, there's no Jesus? Woe unto you. Because you were, the truth was revealed to you and you rejected it. That's what God is meaning. You're sick on the inside because you knew it. It was revealed unto you and yet you would not do it. He says this. He says this. He says, verse 17, Now there is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. God said, I know what's inside of you. I know what's in all men. For I know that within me, that is in my flesh, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Okay. But the devil doesn't want to leave your sin in your flesh. No, 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 no. Nah, that's why there's wrestling. Because you see, what's in your, what's in your flesh is trying to go into your spirit. And your spirit knows that's deadly. So it starts to fight the flesh back. Or the flesh knows if I can get his spirit to be as corrupted as I am, then it's going to make my life easy street. I can do whatever I want to do. But the Spirit is saying, but if I let him corrupt me, I'm dead. I'm going to go to hell and pay for it. So the flesh and the Spirit are constantly fighting because the flesh is trying to corrupt the Spirit. And in the scribes and Pharisees, it did. And they allowed the flesh to, to, to and then the flesh, after it's corrupted the Spirit, the flesh wants to go around and look really good. You know, look, look when it knows it's not. But that's what the flesh wants to do. The flesh wants to overcome your spirit, pack it up with sin, fill it with iniquity, make it completely sick, stomp it down, and then the flesh walks around and, and the flesh comes to a pulpit and the flesh preaches and the flesh does all that stuff. Hey, you can't fool God, man. You can't fool God. You got you to do the right thing. You must live right. And if you know the truth, you must preach it. I don't care what anyone says. If anyone doesn't like the doctrine, that's okay. I'm not fighting against you. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. If you think a certain lifestyle is okay and you want to live that lifestyle, I ain't fighting you. I'm just saying the Word of God said it's not. Okay. He says, verses 20, Now, if I do... The thing which I would not is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I'm done in five minutes. I find on the law 
that when I would do good, evil, what evil? The evil from Genesis. That evil is in my flesh. Evil is with me, where? In my spirit? No. He says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, my spirit. Loves the word, loves church. But when I'm out of God's presence, when I'm out of, when I'm by myself, the, my, 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 um, the evil that is in my outward, my, my, my body, it's not crucified, it's not dead. It's not been dealt with properly. And God don't mind. God don't mind. God, was, God said, I got time and I got judgment. I have no problems. God will sit down and God will say, try him again. <laughs> Pastor Robert, you're going to overcome? You didn't overcome yet? Pastor Robert, okay. Try him again. Try him again. Rebuke, rebuke, do, beat, preach. Try him again. Sometimes they say, you know what? You know what? Stay like that. You, you, since you like sin, you remain in sin. And then you can come to church and you can pretend all you want. And then you can go home and live any way you want. And you can pretend like nobody sees and nobody hears and nobody knows. But I'm telling you something, God knows. God hears and God sees, he knows everything. So who are you hiding it from? If there's sin inside of you, the devil is trying to make you sick like he is sick. Get rid of it. Come to the great physician, the great healer, Jesus of Nazareth, who gives you power and gives me power and gives anybody who says, I give you power to overcome the world. All right? So don't go around being an asymptomatic believer. Do not be an asymptomatic believer. Understand the symptoms are there and go and get your treatment. Go and turn the word of God on. Do you know that the word of the Bible says, now you are, now you are, what? Now you are clean through the word. The devil is beating you up, go put some preaching on, get the Bible out, Start, get some fasting, get to seeking God. It'll clean you up. I promise you, it'll get rid of all the diseases. The word of God is the cleansing. Jesus is the answer to all the issues. And you say, well, I tried it before. Yes, because after you say you're clean, he has to try you again. That's why Peter said, I'll never deny you. He says, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny me. <laughs> I know you're going to deny me. But don't give up. He came back and cleansed it. Go back and next time, don't deny me. Next time, don't deny me. And after a while, after a while, you're going to go, okay, I got it now. I stopped denying him. Okay, I stopped going back to my nonsense. I go and stop doing the stupid things I used to do. I just start serving God. All the foolish things I put away, the things of my youth, I, I put them away. And just start serving God properly. Christian, you've got a challenge today. Are you going to be asymptomatic? Are you going to continue to be asymptomatic? Or are you going to deal with your issues? Are you going to find somebody, if you can't deal with them, to say, let's sit down and let's talk, and there's no condemnation, let's work it out. God, God, this is not a time for killing. This is time for healing. It's time for making you better. It's time for you to grow. And God wants you to grow. And God wants you to be saved. So church, be safe. God be with you. And by the grace of God, we'll see you again. If anybody feels sad after you hear this message, call me up and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you nicely and make you. It, this is not meant to depress you. It's meant to make you aware of what's going on. It's not meant to make you think, oh, I'm some special group of no good person. That's not what God's about. God wants to make you aware. He wants you to bring a conviction, but, not, but godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to break you down and, and make you depressed. All right? So be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor and stand against the devil. And every, after you've done everything, stand. Get the shield. Get the helmet. Get, the, get, the, get, get, the, get, you, get your feet shod with the, 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 the preparation of the gospel of peace. All right? Do all the things that God wants you to do. Knock away those fiery darts. Become what God wants you to become. All the words there. It's all there to help you, to show you what you're to do. May God keep you and may God bless you. God loves you. We love you. We'll see you soon. Amen.